Let's take a look at a couple of different examples. In this first one, we'll look at two race cars moving around different parts of a circular track. Uh, it's noted in this example that the speed of A, which is 180 kilometers per hour, is decreasing at a rate of 8 meters per second squared, and the speed of B, which is 162 kilometers per hour, is increasing at a rate of 3 meters per second squared. All right, so we want to find the velocity of B relative to A and the acceleration of B relative to A. All right, to work this problem, there's really a lot going on, so it's really kind of interesting. So first off, let's take a look at the velocity of A. Now, we're talking about its velocity, but this vector, velocity of A in this direction, in order to do that, we need to know where the origin is and what axes we're talking about. So I move the origin of A over to here. Okay, so here's the origin of A in the green. And then I can say that this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. And so I might be able to write the velocity of A with respect to its origin at A. So that's an O, not a theta, that's an O. So the velocity of A with respect to the origin at A is equal to 180 kilometers per hour And then I'm interested in what's the angle here. So here's the x-axis and the y-axis. I notice that this is 30 degrees in here, and so I can draw a line this way where that's 30 degrees. But if this is a right angle, then that is 60 degrees. And it should be noted then that this line is perpendicular to that line, which is parallel to the velocity. So this must be 30 degrees in here. So 90 plus 30 is 120 degrees. So the velocity of A relative to its own origin is 180 kilometers per hour at an angle of 30 degrees. Now the velocity of B in a similar fashion with respect to its origin, O sub B, well that's going to be in this direction. And then what about my angles? So here's an x, and here's a y. If this is 45, this must also be 45 by alternate interior angles. So that's 45. Now that just happens to be because we're working with 45 degree angles. This is 90, so this must be 45 degrees as well. So we can see the velocity points below the x-axis at an angle of 45 degrees. So this is 162 kilometers per hour at an angle of minus 45 degrees, which is the same as 315 degrees. You can choose whichever of those coordinate systems you so desire. So there's the two velocities, but how do I find the velocity of B relative to A? Well, this would be the velocity of B with respect to its origin, O sub B, plus the velocity of O sub B relative to O sub A. I know to do that because of the cancellation of the OBs. That's what I'm trying to do here. So let me finish this off first. Plus the velocity of OA. Again, I want to cancel the OAs with respect to A. And when it's all said and done, I have B over O sub B, O sub B over O sub A, O sub A over A. And you can see from this example, the OBs cancel, the OAs cancel, and I'm left with B with respect to A, which is what I'm looking for, the velocity of B relative to A. So that's going to be, well, the velocity of B with respect to A, but what, what we note here is this one right here. The velocity of OB with respect to OA. Those are fixed positions. And so the velocity of OB with respect to OA is zero.
because neither of them is moving. So that's going to go away to zero. And so I'm left with the velocity of b with respect to O sub b plus the velocity of O sub a with respect to a. But I don't know the velocity of OA with respect to A. I know the velocity of A with respect to OA. But we keep in mind that if I switch the subscripts, I simply put a minus sign out in front. So this is the velocity of B with respect to OB minus the velocity of A with respect to OA. And that's going to give me my value. And so that's the velocity of B with respect to OB, which is 162 kilometers per hour. minus the velocity of A with respect to OA. Again, this is 162 kilometers per hour at an angle of minus 45 degrees minus 180 kilometers per hour at an angle of 30 degrees. Oh, well, that's not right. This should be an angle not of 30 degrees, but of 120 degrees. So 180 kilometers per hour at an angle of 120 degrees. Okay, now there's a number of ways of doing this. I can write this as 162 kilometers per hour cosine of minus 45 degrees in the I plus 162 kilometers per hour sine of minus 45 degrees in the J minus 180 kilometers per hour cosine of 120 degrees in the I minus 180 kilometers per hour this minus sign both coming from the minus sign at the end of the original equation uh, and the sine of 120 degrees J I can evaluate this and then I'll combine. Once I've evaluated that, I'll combine this I component with that I component and this J component with that J component. But I would strongly recommend you figure out how does your calculator do that because that's going to make your life a lot easier. So I definitely recommend figure out How to make your calculator do this fast. That way you're not spending time on this little bits and pieces of multiplication and whatnot when the exam rolls around. You can get right down to solving the problems. Okay, so take some time to figure that out might look somewhat familiar. It's not too dissimilar to one of your homework problems. But I have a car traveling at 180 kilometers per hour. It's on a straight road, so that means there's no movement in and out of the page here. But the grade upon which it's moving does change. And it's approximated by this equation here. Okay, now I'm going to write this with a C out in front. And so C is equal to 0 0.0003 in these examples. In fact, uh, given the fact that y equals 0.0003x squared and y has length, uh, the 0 0.0003 must have units of 1 over length because it's being multiplied by x squared and we want to end up with uh, length. Alright, so let me just say that c is equal to 0 0.0003 meters to the minus one to be more precise but i'm going to use c just in its letter form as much as i can as i work this problem okay 100 kilometers per hour is 100,000 meters over 36 seconds 3600 seconds and so 27.78 meters per second after i made my calculations when the car's horizontal position is 400 meters that's a piece of given information what are the tangential and normal components of the car's acceleration? All right, so we know that the, uh, um, the equation for y is 0 0.0003 times x squared. And so if I actually put in units, I get 0 
meters to the minus 1, 400 meters squared. So I'm going to end up with a meters to the minus 1 here, meters squared there, which yields in the end 48 meters for my units. Right? So meters to the minus 1 times meters squared equals meters. So I know the x and the y value. So the velocity vector is equal to 27.78 meters per second. And then that velocity is in this direction, tangent to the circle. Well, how do I find, excuse me, not tangent to the circle, tangent to the curve. How do I find this angle theta in there? to determine what that direction is for E tangential. What is the direction of E tangential? Well, in order to find that, what I need to do is I need to say that's parallel to the tangent to the curve, and so its direction is defined by the tangent to the curve, which is the derivative of y with respect to x. And so that's going to be 2cx. Right? So here's y equals cx squared. So the derivative of y with respect to x is 2cx. And I know that x is equal to 400. And so that's going to equal 2 times 0 0.0003 meters to the minus 1 times 400 meters. Notice meters to the minus 1 and meters will cancel out and I get a dimensionless quantity. But I should. This is rise length over run length. Length over length has no units. And so in fact that dimensionless quantity makes a lot of sense. And so that's going to be, let's see those two zeros cancel, move those two decimal places over, and I get 4 times 2 is 8, and so that's going to be 0 0.24 equal to dy dx. And that's going to be rise over run. The rise is the y direction, the run is the x direction. And so that's equal to the tangent of theta. So the tangent of theta equals the, or excuse me, the angle theta equals the arc tangent of 0 0.24. All right, so what is the arc tangent then of 0.24? That's going to be 13.5 degrees. So theta is equal to 13.5 degrees. All right, so now I know the direction of that velocity. All right, so the velocity is 27.78 degree meters per second at an angle of 13.5 degrees. And that's the direction of E tangential. Now, E normal, then, is going to point in this direction towards the inside of the curvature. And E normal is always at 90 degrees to E tangential. So, but the question is, what is the normal and tangential components of the car's acceleration? So we might go back and remember the acceleration is equal to v dot, the derivative of speed with, with respect to time, in the tangential direction, plus v squared over rho in the normal direction. Now it's interesting to note, the speed, if we go back to the problem itself, is 100 kilometers per hour, and that's constant, okay? The, the problem doesn't say anything about it speeding up or slowing down, so we'll assume that's constant. If the speed is constant, then V dot is going to be zero. And so the acceleration is only V squared over rho uh, along the E sub n. And so this is going to be equal to 27.78 meters per second, and that quantity is squared all divided by rho. All right, well, how do I calculate rho? Keep in mind that rho is equal to 1 plus dy dx squared to the 3 halves all over the second derivative of y with respect to x. And if I go back to this equation, the first derivative of y with respect to x is 2cx. The second derivative is just 2c. And so this problem becomes 1 plus the first derivative of y with respect to x. We've already determined that to be 0.24. That's the first derivative of y with respect to x. So 0 0.24. No units there. Okay, that's dimensionless. That's squared. 
all to the 3 halves power. And then the second derivative is 2c, so that's 2 times 0 0.0003 inverse meters. 0 0.0003. Then divide that. That gives me 1.0876. And I'm going to divide that by 0 0.0006 inverse meters. And when I do that, I get 1,813, and that's meters, because me inverse meters in the denominator becomes meters in the numerator. And so my acceleration then is 27.78 meters per second, quantity squared, all over 1813 meters, and I get 0.426. So the acceleration equals 0 0.426 meters per second squared, right? Because I have meters squared per second squared divided by meters. Meters per second quantity squared, divide that by meters. And when I do that, I get meters per second squared. And the angle of E normal, going back to this, it's if theta is equal to 13 and a half degrees, E normal must be 90 plus 13, so 103.5. This is at an angle of 103.5 degrees. And so I could find the x component and the y component of that if I so desire. So A is equal to 0 0.426 meters per second squared times E normal, because there is no tangential. Remember, it's not speeding up or slowing down. But this would be 0 0.426 meters per second squared cosine 103.5 degrees. That's in the i direction, and that'll be negative, which it should be, because the normal component points up and to the left, so it should be negative, and indeed that will be, plus 0 0.426 meters per second squared sine 103.5 degrees in the j direction. And that will give you the acceleration in the x and the y directions.